Hi everyone, this is Sharon here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about how to use the first principle thinking concept in solving various data science problems. First principle thinking is nothing but breaking down a complex concept into its fundamental parts and hence making it very simple so that you can come up with very innovative solutions. I first came across this concept of first principle thinking while I was reading the book called Elon Musk. So in this book, the author clearly explains how Elon Musk used the first principle thinking in coming up with various innovative solution. In 2002, when Elon Musk started his quest to launch a rocket to Mars, he initially had an idea of buying a rocket so that he can launch the rocket to Mars. But the cost of the rocket was close to 65 million, which was extremely high. And hence, he started a company called SpaceX. So what they did, instead of buying a rocket for 65 million, what Elon Musk did was he understood the concepts behind building a rocket. So he started getting the raw materials and built his own rocket and hence the cost of the rocket reduced by 10 times. So this is the concept of first principle thinking. So when you have a complex problem before you, so what you try to do is break down into its fundamental parts, break down it into smaller parts until you can't divide it any further. So if we take the example of a rocket, consider all the spare parts. What are all the various materials that is required to build those spare parts? You break it down until you can't divide it any further. So this is the concept called as first principle thinking. So we are going to see how to apply this principle on a data science problem so that we can come up with innovative solutions. Okay, so now before going into the first principle thinking, Let's see what happens in a traditional approach or an analog thinking. So most commonly we go with the traditional approach. So let's see what happens in it. So as you see on my screen, so in a traditional approach, what we try to do is we try to start with an existing idea. So we already have an idea about the problem. So we start with the idea and we try to improve it with various options. And finally, what we do is we pick up the best option that helps us in solving the problem. To an extent. So this is the traditional approach. So if we take this particular example that you see on my screen here. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to solve the problem of customer churn for an utility company. So what we do if we use the traditional approach, what we try to do is we try to start with an assumption. So let's say we have, we have, uh, we have identified that Customers who are about to churn, when given and counter offer or when given and discount offer, they are mostly retained. So this is an this is an insight. So what we try to do is we try to build various solutions around it. So we know that when a customer is given and attract to discounts, he is most likely to be retained as our customer. So what we try to do, we try to identify customers who are likely to churn. So we did. We analyze the trust compliance data. We understand the various compliance that are leading to churn. And when a customer makes a compliant, what we try to do is we try to offer him with and discount and hence he will not churn. And what we can do is we can increase the number of customers that are being acquired. So let's say the churn percentage in a particular month is 5%. So we can reduce the churn percentage by not only stopping the customers from moving out, but also by increasing the customer base. And hence, so other approach is to ensure that we acquire more customers. So maybe we run a lot of campaigns and we acquire more customers. The third one is use the best customer support executive tools on the compliant types or categories which are leading to customer churn. So by doing that, what we ensure is we ensure that all the critical problems are solved by the customer support agents who are really good at it and hence the customers are less likely to have any dissatisfaction. So here, what we are trying to do is we have an we have a core concept or core assumption that customers who are likely to churn when offer when offered and counter offer, they are most likely retained. And hence, we build various solutions around it. So we take customers who are making a lot of who are making compliance and then offering discounts to them. We are ensuring that the customer support team is really good in handling especially while handling all the critical issues which are leading to customer churn. So by these approaches, what we are trying to do is we are trying to, we are trying to enhance the available options and hence try to solve the problem to an extent. So the disadvantage of this particular problem is we are not 
solving the core problem. We are not addressing the core issue which is leading to customer churn. Whereas we are trying to we are trying to build something that helps in improving the solution to an extent that helps in like maybe retaining the customer slightly more than what we already have. But actually we are not trying to solve the core problem. So that's the problem with the traditional approach. Now let's move on to the first principle thinking. Now let's move on to the first principle thinking. So as I explained in first principle thinking, what we try to do is we try to break down the problem into its fundamental parts so that we have the best understanding about the problem and so that we can come up with an innovative solution. So before going into the first principle thinking, I want to share a quote by Einstein. So there is a popular quote by Einstein where Einstein says that if he has given one hour to solve a problem, he says that he would spend 55 minutes in, in thinking about the problem and spend only 5 minutes actually solving the problem. So same is applicable to any solution. So majority of our time should be spent on about thinking about the problem, asking various questions to understand the problem to the best extent. And finally, if we have a good understanding about the problem, just like a small amount of time would be enough for us to come up with an innovative solution. And hence, the concept behind the first principle thinking is try to ask as many questions as possible and understand the fundamental concepts to the best extent. The various approach that the methods in first principle thinking is, as you see on my screen, identify the assumptions, break down the problem and finally come up with the innovative solution based, about, based on the breakdown that you have got. So now, Let's pick up the same example that we solved using the traditional approach. So we have a problem of reducing the customer churn for an utility company. So first what we do is by the method of first principle thinking, we try to understand the problem. So what we do, we try to understand how many customers churn in a particular month. And then we try to understand what are all the various reasons for customers to churn out. So as you see on my screen, the various reason uh, if I take an example or like maybe if we assume, so there are four reasons. So as you see on my screen, the first one is customer moving out of a state or country to an area where we don't have any existing service. So this is an area which cannot be solved. So let's say a customer is moving out of a country to a different country where we don't have a service, where the energy company doesn't have a service. So these are the customers who cannot be held back. So they are anyway moving out to a different place where we don't have a service and hence we can't solve this problem. So what we do is we just reject this portion. Let's say we have 100 customers and maybe 10 customers falling into this category. So we remove the 10 customers from our churn bucket and come up and, and use the rest 90 customers to see how we can help them. The second option is account closure due to business closure. The customers who close their account, who close their utility account because they are closing their business. Again, this is a segment which cannot be solved because they are closing down their business and hence all the related services like utility, everything will be closed along with the business. So we can't solve this problem. So what we do is again from the 90 customers who have churned, we remove these customers as well. So let's say there are five customers falling into this category. So we remove these five and then we are left with 85 customers. The next one, as you see on my screen, is customers who have churned within the first three months. So this is a problem, like these customers are churning out. But the problem here is slightly different to the churn problem that we are trying to address. So these are all the customers who have churned within the first three months. So which means that they had any, they had an issue like while onboarding. So these are all, these customers haven't spent enough time on the platform or haven't used the service for the enough time. They have just joined and immediately left. So which means that this is an onboarding problem which needs to be solved separately. So it, this shouldn't be considered as part of churn. So when we say churn, we usually like analyze the customers who have been using the service for quite enough time and suddenly they are deciding to move out. So that's that should be considered in the churn category and hence we ignore the onboarding issue. So the final category is customers who have been using the service for let's say one plus years and have suddenly decided to move out to a different service provider. So this is the customer base which needs to be properly analyzed. So as you see in this approach what we are trying to do is we are trying to 
we are trying to divide the number of customers who have churned into different categories and we are eliminating some of the categories and then we are picking up the category which needs attention. So what we are doing is we have identified a segment which needs to be analyzed to see what's happening. So now focusing on the category D where the customer had been using the service for one plus years and suddenly has decided to churn or to move out to, to a different service provider. So what we do is let's say out of uh, 100 maybe 65 or 70 customers are falling into this category so this is still quite huge about 70 percent falling into this category so what we try to do is instead of analyzing all the customers we try to pick up and segment that needs maybe immediate attention so let's say we try to understand based on revenue we understand we analyze the customer lifetime value for all these customers and pick up only those who have higher customer lifetime value so now after identifying this particular segment, what we try to do is we try to analyze the data of all these customers across, let's say compliance, energy usage, bills, payments, any interaction that happened with those customers. So we try to understand what happened to these customers across the platform, across the different uh, business strategies like uh, bill payments, uh, usage, various strategies and try to understand what has happened to these customers. So then what we do is we try to identify the top 20 or 25 scenarios which is leading these customers to churn out. So now we know the various top scenarios that is leading the customers, these customers to churn out. So then what we do is we use these scenarios as a lead indicator. So next time, whenever a customer is showing up these characteristics. So what we try to do is we try to address the issue as and then. So then what we what we are trying to do is we are trying to solve the customer's problem even before it goes to an extent where the customer decides to move out to a different service provider. And hence we would be able to solve the problem of customer churn. We would be able to prevent the customer from churning off. So this is how you solve a problem using the first principle thinking. So previously using a traditional approach, what we had was we had customers who are churning off we did not try to solve the problem why the customer is churning, but we were trying to address the problem by providing the offers, by providing offers to all the customers who made a compliant. We were trying to bring on the best customer support executive team to these strategies and hence these customers problem would be addressed on a timely manner. But actually we were not focusing on the core issue, why the customers were churning. Whereas by shifting to the first principle thinking, what we were able to do was we were able to identify the different categories. We were, we were able to eliminate the categories which need not have any focus. And then we were able to create a subset or identify a subset which needs immediate focus. And we analyzed the entire data for all these customers and we came up with the scenarios that is leading these customers to churn. And hence, before these scenarios happens, we are able to proactively approach these customers and solve their problems. And hence, we are able to make them happy and not churn off from the platform. So this is how you solve a problem using the first principle thinking. So now, what do you think is the difference between a traditional approach as well as the first principle thinking approach? The traditional approach is really quick. We already know certain things are working. So what we try to do is we try to make few modifications to the existing solution and we are trying to improve it. So what happens is the solution is really quick but we can make only a small incremental improvement. We can't make any drastic changes. Whereas in terms of the first principle thinking, the amount of time that we are going to invest is really huge because we are going to understand the problem. We are going to break down the problem until we reach the fundamental concepts. So we, we invest a large amount of time in understanding the problem and finally solve the problem. So it is slightly time consuming, but the advantage here is we would be able to come up with an innovative solution where using which we would be able to solve the core problem and hence the improvement by using the the improvement that we get by using the first principle thinking would be really high it will be worth the amount of time that we have invested so that's the difference between a traditional approach and the first principle thinking approach in many organizations, what happens is the data scientist team would be working on a lot of different problems and hence 
usually they will be under pressure to go with a traditional approach. They pick up a solution that is already working and then they try to make modification and then they try to achieve an incremental improvement, a small incremental improvement. Whereas if they solve the problem using first principle thinking, of course, there would be like an amount of time that should be invested, but the solution will be very, will be able to achieve a drastic improvement. I hope you learned something new about first principle thinking and how it can be applied to a data science problem. If you like what I am doing here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you think this would be helpful for any of your friends, please share it with them as well. If you want to share some interesting scenarios where you used first principle thinking to solve some complex problems, please share it in the comment and bye until I see you in the next session. See ya.